Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you a treatment for neck pain with radiculopathy, and that is the cervical self-distraction. So we've talked about mechanical traction in previous videos. This is a way that somebody can do the traction on themselves, thus the self-distraction. Now before I go into the technique, I just want to remind you of this graph right here that we looked at in a previous video. On the y-axis, we have Neck Disability Index, or the NDI score. Remember with the NDI score, the lower the score, the better. Okay? So there were three groups in this study. The blue one, which ended up at the end with the highest NDI score, or the worst result, was exercise alone. The triangles in green right here, a little bit better, were exercise plus overdoor traction. And then the orange ones here, the squares, which did the best, is exercise plus mechanical traction. And one of the big points of this study was showing that exercise, although it's good by itself, it did result in a reduction in the NDI score, exercise plus mechanical traction is even better. So exercise alone, still good. Traction alone, still good. But combining both of them is really important to really get that disability down, pain down, symptoms down, and get the person back to what they need to be doing. So if you're going to prescribe this cervical self-distraction, it does need to be coupled with some kind of TheraX. You can find those in other videos. So let's get to the cervical self-distraction. Step one of the cervical self-distraction is one hand, typically of the non-dominant arm, is going to grip under the inferior nuchal line of the occiput. I myself here are right-handed, so my non-dominant arm is the left arm. Now, once I grip under the occiput, I know I'm approximately in the right position when the thumb is on one mastoid process and my index finger is on the other mastoid process. And then, basically, the web space between those two fingers goes between the mastoid processes under that inferior nuchal line. Now the reason why I typically would say that you're going to use the non-dominant arm to do this is because for most individuals the non-dominant arm has a better shoulder range of motion and it's going to be easier to get the arm back there to perform this. Okay? The right arm is going to do something else that we'll see in just a minute. Step two is going to be to take the dominant arm, which for me is the right arm, and make a thumbs down fist. Then the ulnar side or the pinky side of that fist is going to go under the jaw. With my non-dominant arm, which for me is the left, I'm going to do exactly what I did in the first clip, gripping under the inferior nuchal line. And with both hands at the same time, I'm going to exert a light, not a strong, but a light upward force with the attempt to relieve any upper extremity paresthesias or neck pain. This treatment is for neck pain with radiculopathy. So theoretically, any upper extremity paresthesias, numbness, tingling, burning, shooting type of pain should decrease when performing the distraction. Okay? The other thing I want to make sure is that I want my jaw to be closed when I'm exerting that upward force under the jaw. Okay? If your teeth, in particular the upper and lower molars, are not in contact with one another, as you exert the force, you're going to knock the teeth into each other. So you should start not with the jaw clenched really tight, but at least with those upper and lower molars in contact with one another. Here's another view of the self-distraction. Now, for dosage, I'm going to hold this anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds. You really need at least 30 seconds to get any effect of this, kind of like a stretch, but beyond 60, you're sort of getting into that law of diminishing returns, where beyond that, you're not really getting any added benefit. Okay? And remember that you want to follow this with some kind of therapeutic exercise, like cervical retractions or stretches, really anything like that. Okay? And also, you're going to terminate this exercise early if any of these three things occur. Number one, if those upper extremity paresthesias get worse. Theoretically, they should be relieved. But if for whatever reason they get worse, that's not our intention, and so we wouldn't do that exercise. Also, if pain gets worse, 
Uh, we certainly don't want to do this and make the patient have more pain. Also, with any kind of traction, it could be cervical or lumbar, we always run the risk of having dizziness after the exercise or during. So if you encounter any dizziness type of symptoms or nausea, anything like that, you would terminate the exercise. But assuming you don't get any of those three things, you're going to hold for about 30 to 60 seconds and follow it with some kind of Therax. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.